Why did the Mandalorian turn over the child to the Imperials initially? Why? Hello, my wonderful watchers, and welcome to another episode of Betty Adam's Brain Can't Leave Well Enough Alone. Today we're going to be looking at a question that I've had ever since watching episode 3. I'm calling it holding, it out, holding Out for a Hero. Why was it necessary for the Mandalorian to hand Baby Yoda over to the Imperials? And don't think for a moment that it wasn't necessary to the story. I think by now these writers have proven that they're not going to put anything in the story that isn't necessary on some level, either for character development or to drive the plot forward. I think I may get some disagreement of that. Feel free to leave a note in the comments about why you disagree. But I'm going with, for right now at least, everything in this show is meant to move the show forward. I think we were all rather surprised when the Mandalorian turned Baby Yoda over to the Imperials in Chapter 3. No one was terribly surprised when he went back to get Baby Yoda, but that first betrayal had us all very uncomfortable. It gave us all a what moment. As little Toyota whimpered in fear as he was pulled out of sight of the Mando, I think we all died a little inside. However, I believe that that scene was absolutely necessary for the sake of the series and in time will be shown to be a brilliant addition of the, on the writer's and director's parts. You see, without it, we don't really have a hero. As we go into the sixth episode, it's safe to say that everything the writers put into the show went in with a reason. So why did the order of the show involve the Mando handing the child over, regretting his decision, and then going back for him? Why not just skip the several odd minutes of angsting around in shiny new Beskar armor and have the rescue and the shootout happen right then? This show clearly has no problem trimming episodes of dead weight to save time. We haven't had an episode even touch the 40 minute mark yet. I believe that the answer lies in the Mando's character. And I mean character in the sense of the totality of the moral choices that he makes, not just the elements of this persona that Pedro Pascal is masterfully presenting to us. This has to do with how well the Mando upholds the virtues he claims, how closely he sticks to the way. For that rescue to have meaning, it absolutely had to be his choice. It couldn't be forced or even coerced on him. There could be no coercion at all. This had to be a sacrifice that he makes for the child. And for a sacrifice to have meaning, it has to be made with full free will. Otherwise, if he was coerced into the rescue, then he is a patsy or a puppet, but not a hero. And according to this show, the Mandalorian is an honest-to-goodness, old-fashioned Western hero. He might be rough, battle-stained, and far from perfect, but he is a hero. He is constantly striving to uphold the virtues that he and his covert hold dear. Now what virtues was he upholding when he broke his contract and busted Baby Yoda out of there, you might ask? According to the law, the only law that seems to be recognized in this part of the galaxy, turning over the child had been the correct choice. In this case, the laws of man, as it were, are represented by the rules of the Bounty Hunters Guild. The Mando broke those rules. He betrayed the governing body he had freely joined, and treason itself is no virtue, so how does this make him a hero? The answer is simple. The Mando, as a Mandalorian, answered to a higher law, the Way. One of the virtues most highly valued by these people is the care of foundlings, as illustrated by the conversations between the Mando and the Smith or to put it on a slightly older note, to look after orphans in their distress. So now he has two virtues competing, the virtue of honoring his word, of sticking to the laws of the Bounty Hunters Guild, and the, and the virtue of caring for an orphan in its distress. Either way, his honor would be tarnished, but in the end, he chose the way, the higher law. And from the events at the end of Chapter 3, we can safely assume that his covert agreed he had, cho in fact, chosen the higher virtue, and in their eyes, and the eyes of the fans, maintained his honor in place as a hero. But how, you may ask, and very rightly, could this spectacular rescue have been anything but Mando's choice? What force could have possibly been coercing him? And what does this long rant have to do with him handing over an innocent child to the evil Imperials? 
From the fate hints in Chapter 4 and the reasonably solid confirmation in Episode 5, we can say with some assurance that Baby Yoda has some measure of influence over the people around him that goes beyond just being extremely cute by mammalian standards. He might not be able to brainwash an enemy, but he can definitely plant suggestions in the mind of people who are already receptive to them. Somebody get this some baby some bone broth already, or at least something with bones in it. That kid can clearly manipulate people around him to some degree, and he clearly wanted to stay with the Mando at the end of episode 3. That heartbreaking whimper as he was dragged off screen by Dr. Pershing made that clear. So this is why that order of events is so critical to establishing Mando as a true blue hero and not just Baby Yoda's puppet. Firstly, the Mando did choose to let him go. This shows that he clearly has at least some resistance to the will of the child. Granted, the child who had been completely stressed out and was still recovering from force lifting the mudhorn, one could probably assume that that might diminish his oddly telepathic abilities, unless they're just inherent to infants of that species, sort of a natural ability to get anything around them to take care of them, and not force-related, but the child was exhausted, so his will might have been weakening. But still, Mando did choose to let him go. Secondly, it is almost a given, once we assume that the child has these capacities, that the, the Imperials were not only aware of them, but had some way to counter it. It cannot be a coincidence that in the room with the child hovering menacingly over him was the mind-altering torture droid, which has been shown time and again to be able to break somebody's will, reduce their capacity for rational thought, and focus. And the child was just zonked out. So the Mando bursts in to rescue him <clears throat> and pulls him out. But from these two points, the fact that the Imperials were almost certainly were suppressing the child's mind control ability at this point, and the Mando had already shown some resistance, we can say that from the moment the Mando left the child with the Imperials, the Mando himself was no longer under any influence that the child could have over him, either through the Force or any Latin telepathic abilities native to the young of his species. Every choice that the Mando made from there on out, from refusing the Mudhorn signal to the moment with the silver knob that, deci that decided the course of the episode, was pure Mando. Just a lone Mandalorian, his conscience, and the way. Had he not handed over the child initially, his actions would have been forever tainted by the shadow of coercion. That little whisper of a voice, is he really the hero, or he was he just acting as the Baby Yoda's puppet? But they were not. Rescuing Baby Yoda under this situation was his choice. His, he chose the higher virtue, he made the sacrifice, and all of this was of his own free will. And that is why the Mando is a hero. I hope you enjoyed this little episode of speculation and analysis. If you, if you have, please like and subscribe, and feel free to share this video. Or do you think that I'm just grasping at cute little straws here and making up a wild theory? I think my analysis is pretty solid, and I think that answers the question of why they had the Mando leave the child initially. But again, if you disagree, leave a note in the comments, and I will see you later.